Hi everybody, this is James Tompkins. So, when is the optimal time to make an asset investment? Well, first of all, you need to know what an asset investment decision is. Uh, have a nugget for that. Basically, it's what a company spends its money on. So, for example, Apple investing in the Apple phone. Did they need to hire scientists and software engineers, etc.? They did, right? Or a company hiring a new CEO or building a new factory. And also, you need to understand what I mean by net present value. And of course, this can also be found on the Corporate Finance Lecture Series playlist. Anyway, bottom line is that a company not only decides, well, hey, I wonder if I'll build this new factory or not, but also, what is the optimal time to build this new factory? So, what do you think a logical way would be to analyze this? Well, what's been sort of a bottom line analysis, at least with respect to what we quantify regarding the asset investment decision? Net present value, right? So basically what we could do is we could just try the net present value techniques for different time periods and Whichever one has the higher net present value for the time in question, would that be the logical way to go? It would, right? Well, let, let, let me give you an example, okay? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick a really sort of classroomish example just to keep it really simple, but it will get the point across. So, first of all, um, you know, so some of you have obviously bought a computer. Maybe you're even watching this on a computer online. So... The last time you got a computer for personal purposes, did you have any incentive to delay? Well, presumably you did, right? Because at least in the United States, the longer you delay on buying a computer, are you going to get more computer or more value for your money? You are, right? And so actually, computers, this is something that companies deal with all the time. You know, when, when should we replace our computers. So imagine a company is thinking, well, all right, I can either invest in a computer today and it's going to cost me 10000 and as a result, imagine it's going to save me $1,500 forever. Or I could delay a couple of years or time periods or whatever this is and the price of the computer is going to go down, but it's the same computer just to illustrate this technique and, and so I'm going to reap the same benefits. Okay, and let's assume that the discount rate for this these choices is 10%. So with plan A, if I conduct a net present value, what, what do I have to do? Do I have to bring all these guys to time zero? I do, right? So here I have the minus 10,000, which is already at time zero. 1,500 over 0.1, so that's a perpetuity. You can look at my time value of money lecture on that if you want to f figure out why that's the formula for a perpetuity. And so basically all of this comes to 5,000 at time zero. So let's look at plan B. So here I have my minus 6,000, here's my perpetuity formula again, I get 9,000. So with plan A I had 5,000, with plan B I have 9,000, so does that mean that I do plan B with a higher MPV? I don't, right? Because why? Well, for what time period is this 9,000? Well, it's a time 2, right? We have this 6,000 at time 2, perpetuity, all, the, all of that is at time 2. And what about the 5,000 for plan A? That was at time 0, right? So how do we make an apples-to-apples -apples comparison? I mean, can we compare a $9,000 at time 2 to a $5,000 at time 0? We can't, right? So what do we need to do? Well, we need to put them in the same time period, right? So in other words, we need to take this 9000 and bring it back to time 0. So if we do that using single cash flow principles, we get 7438. Now are we in a position to compare plan A to plan B. Now we are, right? So now both of these are at time zero 
And so which one has the higher MPV? Plan B, right? And so therefore, according to the numbers I made up, what would we do? Well, if all we cared was what we quantified, of course, in any decision, there are also what kind of issues? Qualitative issues, which by definition is stuff we haven't put into numbers, but at least with respect to what we quantified, what this is showing is, hey, we need to wait a couple of years. So in this example, I did it with just two years or two, two time periods. Of course, in real life, if you were faced with this kind of issue, you could you know, have a number of different time periods on a spreadsheet, and you would simply pick the time that had the highest MPV. So I hope this was helpful for you, and take care.